Hello there, everybody. I am Ross Pitt Shark Hunter. This over here is Wizzy Puff. Welcome to the Ross and Wizzy Fan Fiction Power Hour. I am personally sick of Wizzy Puff's shit. So, I am taking him through the magical journey of My Little Pony Fan Fiction. Now that we got that stuff out of the way, this has been the quickest intro we've done. Okay, so you call yourself a fan, but you keep using it as a method of torture. Because you're not. Fair enough. Uh, today we have a special episode for you all. Our first romance fan fiction. I mean, technically, Forever Young, and uh, there are some with romance, you know. Forever not Young, I do not believe, was tagged romance. I would tag it as romance. They were obviously I in love. I would not. Maybe they were in love, but that fan fiction was not about romance. Okay, I'd agree to disagree. No, you're just wrong. Completely wrong, actually. We'll also agree to disagree on that. You're just an idiot. And that as well. Today, we have a romance fan fiction. Not only that, but it is a gay romance fan fiction. Specifically, Hold on. male male gay romance. Sorry, my cat had to be let in. And by had to be let in, I mean he didn't have to be let in, and I wish I could have let him stay outside. But this asshole would have just kept scratching. <laughs> Fun fact, one time he actually, I kid you not, scratched for two hours straight. Oh my god. What does your door look like at this point? <sighs> if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> so, we both have to run fairly quickly. We should probably start... All right, this is Public Boundaries by Milo Chalks. Chapter one, not even a kiss? You know, you say it's chapter one, but it's also the only chapter, so I'm not sure. I don't know what else I'd say, just not even a kiss to begin with. What, what do you want? Just say chapter, not even a kiss? Same thing, whatever. I sat there, politely, comfort. Comfortably, unassumingly, I sat there with my best friend as we laughed and talked while eating dinner together. <laughs> in the middle of the restaurant, it was nothing out of the ordinary or overly complex in the minds of everyone within visible range of our table. Just two friends eating dinner after a long, after a day of doing whatever they did. Just friends, buddies, nothing to examine or look too closely at. I just kept telling myself that this is what the ponies around us thought. So ponies are homophobic. I like that. Lovely. Since they had reason to believe that, to believe that, and only that, there was all there, that was all there was to it. Who should be, I guess I should be playing that guy? Yeah, you're, you're the narrator. First person story. That's what my dad would have believed, I thought to myself. Except, that wasn't quite the case. He laughed and smiled along with me. He gave me a warm grin and acted polite whilst I went on and on about the socio-political background of some new antique starlight glimmers... Some new antique starlight glimmers Dad had shown me. He couldn't have cared less, but he sat there, still smiling. My boyfriend. It's still a bit weird to say... It wouldn't be lying to say that he was my best friend, because he is. But he is so much more than that as well. He sat opposite of me, plunging his fork into the leafy greens he had in front of himself, sitting cross-legged, and folding his hooves in that stereotypically colorful way. <laughs> dot 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 colorful. Not going to use words like flamboyant, you know. Maybe that's not a pony word. Oh, come on, that's so a pony word. Do you know? Why would you know? You don't know. You've never seen this show. Fair enough. How do you know? But how do you not have a word like flamboyant in the pony world? Uh, easily. I couldn't help but notice the way his posture, his posture presented his image, leaving possible hints for the skeptical ponies around us. 
Even if that was ridiculous, I scooped up my own food, the fork fastened in my aura as I let whatever I was chewing on desperately try to fill the giant, fluttery, fearsome hole in my stomach. By the way, Princess Twilight is going to be coming down for a couple of weeks, so get ready to have Flurry stolen from you all the time. Flash Sentry chuckled from across the table, popping a uh -huh. cherry tomato between his teeth. He Ew. was stunning. Do you not like cherry tomatoes? I do, but I don't like to th think of them being crushed in between teeth. <laughs> he was stunning. A slightly paler coat to mine, but just shinier and softer. I've always been jealous of his looks, and the reason why he picked Sunburst the Crystal... The crystaller to love is still lost to me. Is she? That is exciting. It turns out Princess Twilight loves antiquing just as much as I do, so we might have to compare what we've found, I replied. A wide smile reached over my face as I thought of Twilight coming. As long as you don't leave your entire collection around the house like you did last time, trying to get to the toilet was a nightmare. He smiled with warmth again. It was infectious, really. I was still head Ew. over hook head over hooves. Ew. Yeah, infections. Disgusting. The word infectious doesn't have to be like coronavirus, come on. Oh wow, you're the one who said it, not me. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I'm making this dated. Alright. I couldn't help but blush and return the smile. But I had an inkling, just something gnawing at me. It hurt. A growing paranoia made me feel dizzy. Flash had oh, it's this to young spending... homeless child gnawing at my leg. That's what it is. <laughs> Jesus. Flash had hinted to us spending a lot of time at my house. Did any pony hear it? Is any pony putting the dots together? Are they looking at us? All I wanted was to look around, to see the judging faces of skepticism looking at us. But I knew if I did, then Flash would have would sense my fear too. He was good like that. He knew exactly what I was like. I love him so much, but there was one thing that held us both back. I... I was terrified of being seen with him in public. Wuss. Come on, Ross. You can't just say something like that. This is a very sensitive topic. I don't care. Ooh, Ross, really stepping on those eggshells, crunching them underneath his feet. I knew I shouldn't be. I knew I shouldn't care what other ponies think, if they think anything. That was logical, reasonable, rational, sunburst speaking. I really wish that I could have used him like... I really wish that I could have used oh him that night, but no. Irrational. Paranoid, anxious sunburst made his appearance. Flash and I had... Reappearance, actually, but whatever. Oh. Flash and I had made... Flash and I had been on conflicting rosters at the castle for almost three weeks. He'd spend the day at home while I worked as Crystaller. Then I would go home... Okay, so Crystaller is like a whole thing with a certain baby. It's a whole thing. I'm so confused. All right, so he, like, looks after Cadence and Shining Armor's baby. I forget if that's what they call it. Maybe it's something else entirely. Hmm. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That's at least the job they gave him in the show. So is this claiming that Crystalor is Sunburst, and it's just, like, a cover-up for them spending time together or something? No. No, oh, okay. Then I would go home, and his shift would just... A would just about to start as night guard. So, to celebrate his three-day staycation, we went out for dinner. I assured him that night I was much better with my anxiety over us. I didn't want to disappoint him or anything. I'll be sure not to. I just wanted to recognize. Oh, I just wanted to reorganize. Good job. I said trying harder to not inch my compul to not itch my compulsion to scan the restaurant in that anxious way he knows about. I looked over to our water bottle and tipped the rest in. 
hoping that I could have a quick peek whilst looking around for a waiter to refill our water. But the second I finished off my glass, the server had beaten me to the game, replacing our water, water bottle with a full one. Sigh. So close. Damn. Alphabetically or numerically this time? He jeered, wiggling his eyebrows at me and making me melt just as much as it made me laugh. For the briefest of seconds, I got lost, almost forgetting the restaurant and the ponies around us. But as quickly as the euphoric feeling came, I was once again left with the anxious pit that made me suddenly not want to finish my dinner. I put my cutlery on my plate and leaned back in my chair. It didn't take long for him to finish, too, unlike me, with an empty plate. He leaned on the table and gazed on at me. I know you don't... Wait, no, that's... That's him. me, you jerk. I apologize. I know you don't like it when I say this, but you really are beautiful, Sunburst, he said. It was a weird feeling, a mix of love and lightness, coupled with the paranoia just sinking further into my conscience and the fur on my back tingling. He was doing this for me. I had to keep telling myself that. He was doing all of this for me, to make me comfortable and happy and loved. I loved him so much. No pony else would do. No pony else would do all this for me. And what we have is so special to me. But that night, all I wanted to do was run. Aw, oh, Flash. I never knew how to react to that, though. Admittedly, I was blushing like crazy, but my head sank and my voice lost a lot of volume in an irrational attempt to make sure to make sure no pony heard me. He only smiled harder, though. But he was also starting to pick up on it, too. He knew that when my when I lower my voice, it's because I'm getting anxious. He also knew I had a problem with it being public. And I knew how irrational it was, too. It was still ingrained in my... Past? I guess that word will do. <laughs> it's like the writer was trying to figure out the right word there. He just put it all into the story. He knew it was harder for me anyway, being open about who I am. I still can't really say it out loud, but I was trying to get better for him. Okay, but you're not talking out loud. You're thinking right now, so... You can say the word. Because I wanted him to be happy just as much as I was. I knew the best way to make him happy was to be confident and proud. But I just wasn't ready. Also, what do you plan on doing with that spare room? You said you were going to move all the artifacts out of it. But then what? It's not going to be doing much. He continued on with the conversation, trying to steer away from the elephant in the room. Well, I don't know. We've been, uh, that for ages now. I guess I just wanted more homely. I'll be the first to admit my house is a bit of a cave. Maybe I could turn it into a spare bedroom for Starlight so she doesn't have to stay at yours or a hostel when she visits. But who knows? It might become a more permanent bedroom someday. I looked down in an attempt to hide my my horrible blush. I read that as adorable first. I was going to say, more like adorable blush. Aww. I'm sure that's what uh, Flash is thinking. <laughs> that was the point. Whatever. My orange coat only getting more vibrant around the cheeks. I was terrible at hi at hinting, and my face let me know it. But just as he went to say another thing... I heard a gasp from a table nearby. It must have been from something trivial, but I was on edge, and it made me jump in my seat. A little whimper ex escaped me as I looked around nervously. Sunburst, are you all right? He asked, leaning in closer. I was being really stupid. No, you I'm are. fine. Ooh! You trying to separate them? If it makes you angry, yes. Mmm! <clears throat> You told me I can have one gay fic. I don't care the amount of gay fics we have. I never said one gay fic. You told me. <laughs> you told me I could have one gay fic. Unless you have an audio recording of that, I don't think I did. 
I never should have stopped. I never should have clicked stop on Audacity. That wouldn't have recorded me. Whatever. I replied, trying to stop my voice. Actually, um, it would have recorded you because at that point I did not have my headphones in, but whatever. Oh. All right, clever. <laughs> I replied, trying to stop my voice from cracking or raising. Oh, flamished. <laughs> what kind of voice was that? It's this kind of voice. I would not want to be at that restaurant. <laughs> Too bad you're at it. <laughs> Put yourself in the character, Wizzy. All right. The waiter was right behind me, and I was way too focused on maintaining my demeanor to pay attention to my surroundings. Ah! I shrieked, my fur standing on edge and my hooves grabbing the table. The waiter kept apologizing, acting like I'm he had so just sorry. stabbed me with a fork. It's all my fault. Yeah, you really stabbed him with a fork. Like, who does that? He was probably just as surprised as my me. My grandfather. What the heck? What did your grandfather do? That was a joke. Possibly. I don't know what my grandfather got up to during the <laughs> war. <laughs> then I started apologizing whilst he was still apologizing, and eventually we parted with mutual apologies four times over, and the bill now slipped between us. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sunburst, are you okay? Flash looked over to me, his eyes only filled with concern for me. It made me feel so happy. He'd kill me if I said this, but I really didn't deserve him. You don't. <laughs> Nobody deserves my boy Flash. What's wrong? You're so jumpy and fidgety tonight. He knew that I was freaked out. He even gave me the chance to come clean. But no, I was being my awkward, dumb self. I'm okay, Flash. Maybe just a little tired. Yeah. Dumb as right. Ooh. Take that, Sunburst. I, I don't know Sunburst at all, by the way. He has a goatee. He just seems like the nerdy type, so I'm kind of shipping them as jock and nerd. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. Exactly right, actually. So. <laughs> yeah, I kind of got that from the uh, fan art in the uh, picture title thing, whatever. I went quiet again. I looked down like a sad, anxious puppy dog. I flicked my eyes this way and that, then back to Flash. Okay, well, we don't have to stick around for dessert. We can just go home and... He reached out and put his hoof over mine. That's when I gave it all away. I went into a panic and ripped my hoof from his grasp. I became a monk and sold all of my... <laughs> what the heck? Sorry, I, uh, I reacted a bit too late. I gave it all away. <laughs> I became a monk and sold all my earthly possessions. <laughs> putting, it under, putting it under the table and gingerly glancing around, looking for the stares or skeptical looks. I don't know what got into me. It was like autopilot. I could almost see the realization hit him. First he recoiled, shocked, but then he, <gasps> but then he saw me look around, and he understood what this all was about in an instant. My hooves were outstretched. My hooves we are outstretched on the table now. You see, I'm not gonna I'm wow. not gonna hold back with any of these typos. My attempt at trying to stop the nervousness and play off what I had just done. But the damage was done. Sunburst have have you been anxious the whole dinner? He asked, looking deep into my eyes. I couldn't lie to him. No way. Not with those gentle, caring firm eyes fixed on my own. He can also hear your heart rate. So he'll know if you're lying. Can he? Is that his thing? No. Aw. I'm just referencing Daredevil. Aw, come on. You know I haven't seen Sorry, that. Sorry, I've been watching Daredevil. Ah, I need to watch that. You really do. It's the best show of all time. Really? You could also read the comics. Those are pretty good, too. Yeah, comics. Not for I... me. Not unless they're Avatar manga. Oh, brother. All right. No way. Not with those gentle, caring, firm eyes fixed on my own. My lip quivered as I slowly, tentatively nodded. Shrinking down a bit, I felt his empathy as I nodded. He hated seeing me like this. Okay, Sunburst. We'll go home. 
I understand. It's not easy when you're, uh, I guess, us, I guess. I don't know why I read an <laughs> H there. Instead of the S? When you're, uh, uh, I guess, stupid. Take that. Ooh, got him. Mm. Really flooded me. It was our date night. Our date night. And I had just Your date down. night. <laughs> I shouldn't have felt that relief or that eagerness to go. But I did. And so I got up. Flash following suit. Bits in the checkbook and things packed away. I went to turn around to head towards the door. Wait a sec. I just want to tell you something. I was waiting for some sort of we need to get... Wait. Was that supposed to Wait. be you saying that or me? I have no idea. But the last person who talked was me, so I would have assumed it was you. Um, I think it was uh, you. But because... I think it is me, though. Wait a sec. I just want to tell you something. I was waiting for some sort of, we need to get you through this, or some other comment. But as I leaned in, in front of half the restaurant, Flash went in for, ooh, for a deep kiss. Ooh. He wrapped his hooves around. He wrapped his hooves around me as my heart dropped to my stomach, and all my hooves tongue, felt like giving tongue, way. Tongue, 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 tongue. <laughs> uh, horse kissing. The kiss felt like it had been going for centuries already. Every bone in my body was telling me to run away. That every pony was watching, was glaring, was judging. We were kissing in the middle of everyone. My worst nightmare had turned to reality. I heard the gasps. I felt the stares. Ponies had stopped talking around us. Eventually, my body kicked in again, ripping my face away from his and taking a step back. Worry and fear filled his face. My breath, my breathing was becoming ragged. My body was shaking. My face had nothing but horror painted on it. His assured, euphoric smile quickly drained into a horrible white, what have I done look. I did something... I really do regret. I turned away from him, stumbling through the restaurant, probably drawing even more attention than the kiss had. I had no ambition to look at the ponies staring at me or him or anything. But then I saw one, out of the corner of my eye. It was a stallion, but he had my coat. It was my dad. In all of Equestria, I was seeing my dad. I couldn't see his face. I barely got a glance. But I knew he was looking at me, at what I did. All I wanted was to get out of there, and get out of there I did. The second get the glass... out of there! <laughs> the second the glass doors crashed against me and gave way, I bolted down the street and away from Flash in the restaurant. But of course, he's the Flash, so he can catch up to me really quick. Wap, 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 wap. I assume like anyone with the nickname Flash or the name Flash would be fast, so you know. I don't know. We don't know his speed. Oh. Thought his cutie mark might, like, have a lightning bolt on it. I think it actually does have a lightning bolt, but it's a shield. Hmm. He's a guard pony, so, you know. Yeah. He found... He finally found me in the crystal square. It was scarily quiet. I walked past this square every day to go to work, always bubbling with life and action. So is Crystal Square like Times Square? Beats me. No, I've never seen it. Hmm. Probably not. There's always something going on. Except during the night when the most action it got was the odd pony making their way home or stumbling th through the street. And then the ponies that get mugged don't forget about those. Uh, yeah, it is a shield lightning bolt thing. Hmm. I'd assume that he's Flash's cutie mark. like a fast guy then. Eh. But it was weird, seeing it this quiet. You never know how to visualize it until you see it. I must have been sitting there for ages, because I no longer heard the rush of the water fountain I leaned against. All I could hear was him calling out my name from around me. But then I saw him turn the corner in the street nearby. He looked exhausted. He must have searched half the suburb for me. Was... <laughs> what? I'm being exhausted. Oh. Nice. I know how exhaustion works. I have asthma. A. <laughs> Drawing from experience like a true actor. Yeah. Turns out he was having an actual asthma attack, and 
All I did was listen and compliment his acting. <laughs> that was the day that Ross had died. Uh, that's fucked. <laughs> it was like a strange mixture of relief and anger where I didn't know if I wanted or didn't want him to find me. Anger? Come on, you can't be angry at him. You're the one who ran away from his kiss and called it a nightmare. Was... Come on. You're a coward. Suppers. <laughs> Finally, I found you. He cried out, picking up his pace to the water fountain. Sunburst, I'm so, 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 so sorry. He picked up his pace, coming right up to the fountain. I don't know what I was thinking. I just wanted you to feel more confident being yourself, and I didn't know how else to do it, so I thought that it might that I might be able to do it at the restaurant. But that was so, 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 so wrong, and I'm so damn sorry. <laughs> Jesus, it's all just one big word right there. Yeah, classic. He blurted out, looking down at me, sitting against the fountain. I didn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. I sat there, sniffling and breathing heavily. <laughs> Holding back tears. No words wanted to come out anyway. So I just looked back down at the ground. I wasn't mad, just hurt. Why are you... Don't be hurt, come on. Just be, like, scared. He sat down a respectable distance from me, awkwardly kicking around the pebbles on the cobblestone ground. I really messed up, didn't I? I tried to say yes, except that's you did. stupid. He's didn't mess up. Come on, just like... Ugh. How dare he kiss you in public? Without your consent, that is. Consent right. does matter. That's fair. I just feel like you're being a bit harsh on him when he didn't really do something so horrible. I tried to say yes, but nothing but a except a small croak came out as I, as I, so I just retorted, ugh, so I just resorted to nodding and continuing to look down and avoid shivering. The night was getting cool, and the lack of movement was getting to me, the lack of movement was getting to me, my coat no longer keeping the chill at bay. Out of three, how bad was what I did? I gently stamped my hoof against the cobblestone. It's actually saying clop, clop, clop. Uh, uh, I tried to imitate the noise wink. best as I could. He sighed again. It was long, sad, defeated, and angry. Uh, angry at himself. Sonny, baby, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have put you like... I've pushed you like that. That was so stupid of me to think that embarrassing and pretty much totally outing you to all those stallions and mares was the way to help you get over your fear just for our listeners ross did ad lib that baby i did it's true he paused to take a breath and move a bit closer to me rubbing his leg awkwardly as his cheeks reddened i forgot you didn't have I forgot you didn't really have the same sort of experience coming to grips with being who you are. Oh my god, they're so avoiding saying the word gay. I, I'm sorry. I croaked back. It is a children's show, Izzy. You You're can't say right. gay on a children's show. You know, except That's like just disgusting. Andy Mack and um, other shows. Albeit with a bit more coherence than the yes earlier. He looked over at me with nothing but care in his eyes. Sonny, you have nothing to be sorry for. Why are you sorry? I don't want to be sorry. <laughs> they put their lips together in a sobbing make-out sesh. Nice. Just for our listeners, I totally made up that part. No. It's especially gnaw-inducing, considering how it's, uh, you know, first person. But <laughs> whatever. Whatever, Ross. 
and putting a hoof around me. My hair raised a bit and my heart beat faster as I looked around quickly, satisfied that no pony was around. I wanted to make you uh, happy, but I, but I can't do that if, if I'm too scared to. You, us. Ooh. Ross, really stepping on those eggshells hard. I stammered. I was a wreck, but his warmth was making it a lot easier. He lifted my chin up and looked at me in the eyes. He was beautiful. I hadn't seen his face since the restaurant. His eyes were damp and his mane was frazzled. Sunburst, just being around you makes me happy. And I want to share that with you. I guess I pushed you tonight because every time I see you anxious or scared to be yourself, it hurts. Ooh, no. What the? <laughs> That's supposed to be you it's, know? I think. Okay. U N N O. <laughs> I'm just saying, Uno. Uno. I want to see you get comfortable because I want you to be just as happy as I am. Oh, that's just like what uh, uh, Sunburst was saying earlier. We were. Oh, it's precious. We were quiet for a while. We just sat there, embracing each other and keeping the quickly cooling night away. Eventually, I hugged tighter and brought my mouth closer to his ear. I saw my dad while you were kissing me. <laughs> That's an interesting thing to say. <laughs> I mean, I get it, but like... <laughs> it just sounds weird. <laughs> Tears started streaming down my face and my br breaths got heavier and heavier as I tried to keep from sobbing. I clutched him as tight as possible, my breathing becoming raggedy and out of control. Continue. You need to go. Oh. Sorry, I thought you were earlier. Shit. Was the first thing he said. Now I'm glad that you got the swear word and not me. He then began to hold me as tight as possible. I was making weird noises, trying to keep it all in. I didn't want to start moaning in the middle of the square. Is this going to turn into a cop fic? Yeah. <laughs> Sonny, I'm so damn starry. Oh, I'm such a scumbag. <laughs> no, you're not, Flash. I don't know. Like, half of the Brony fandom would disagree with you. Really? People hate Flash, dude. I am not one of those people, however. I think that Flash Hedgery is the best character. I don't know. I I, ju I mean, that's not true. I don't think he's the best character, <laughs> but I like him. He's the best male character besides Spike, you know? Well, yeah, besides Spike, Big Mac, Shining Armor. Shining Armor, really? Brayburn, Carmel. I would say Brayburn and Spike are better than him, but then it goes to Flash. I totally ship the jock nerd relationship, like with uh, how I ship Bo and Kyle and uh, She Ra. All right. I don't ship it. I wanted to say no, or it's okay, I forgive you, or we should get out of here. But nothing came out. I buried my face deep into his embrace, trying desperately to take control over my emotions again. Seeing out, out loud had just brought on so much emotion, so much hurt. I knew I shouldn't forgive him just yet. Yes, you should. Shut up. But I just wanted him to be here with me. Hey, now. It wasn't his it wasn't fault consensual. I saw my dad. That's true, but he should forgive him. Just because it's gay, Wizzy, doesn't make it okay, Wizzy. Okay, gay equals okay. No, it does. Get that through literally. Your skull. <laughs> literally. Like a month ago, when we were doing quizzes, you remember that was. Right, I guess, I guess Ross is homophobic. Whatever. The Sundari quiz that we, or the Dare quiz, which Dare are you? And it had the whole question about, uh, if, if your crush kissed you, well, how would you react? And you were like, no, that's not. Okay, cool. Shut up! Stop being rational. 
Uh, anyway, my point was he obviously didn't mean any harm and has apologized many times for it and obviously feels bad. You should forgive him. Neither did that teenage boy, Wizzy. What the heck? In the quiz. Oh. Who said it was a teenage boy? Come on. I don't know. I just assumed, you know, anime and all that. Excuse me, but I only date real men now. You know, not teenagers. Sorry to all you teenage boys out there who wanted to get with Wizzy. <laughs> Right, where was I? But it, but it wasn't. Oh, it wasn't his fault. I saw my dad. The only one I could blame was myself. Thankfully, he managed to speak out loud. It's getting really cold out here. We c can we we can go home, and I can make you some green tea and get you a blanket. Sunburst. I'm so sorry. Aw, forgive him. I think he saw me mouth the words, it's okay, as he looked down at me and gave me one more quick squeeze before panting and standing up, poor parting and standing up. There you go. He offered me a hoof up and we set off for home, a close yet respectable distance away. There was a tense sort of silence, one where there was obviously more to say and both of us could sense it. But the cold, quiet walk was no place to say it. It began to rain, not helping either of our moods, or the little warmth we shared left. The second we got home and I had closed the door with my horn, we hugged tightly, ignoring the shivers and the fresh wave of coldness that came with pressing our damp coats together. I, was tear I wasn't teary anymore, but I felt another pang as we hugged again. Breaking the hug... Flash went and put some water on to boil, grabbed us towels, and wrapped me up tightly. I stood there like a stunned chicken. I knew that I could have done both those things without either of us taking a single step, but I also knew I should let him do this again. Who is he, Scootaloo's dad? Sorry, going back to the chicken thing. <laughs> but I also knew I should let him do this. We both sat down on the couch on our own corner, wrapped in our towels on our own cushions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We both blurted out at the same time. I wrapped my towel tighter, staying quiet and letting him go first. I know I keep saying it. You're probably sick of it. But I want you to know how much I feel like a feather brain. I should have respected the way you felt about your sexuality. I know I have no right to change who you are, but if you ever want to work on that issue, I'm here for you, Sonny. He said, holding my cold, damp hoof in his own. I want to get better. I spoke quietly, squeezing his hoof back idly. I want to be as confident and as happy as you, because you just... Sigh. I'm jealous of you. I'm jealous of how comfortable you are. And I want to feel that confident too. But I don't know where to begin, Flash. I don't know how to begin to be better. It's okay, Sunburst. We'll work on this together. I'm going to be there every step of the way. I, I promise. I don't know what happened to Flash's voice. It's like slowly turning into Jason Funderburger. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I do Jason Funderburger for a character before? I'm pretty sure. It could have been Flash. I don't think I played Flash before. Hmm. Could have been Shining Armor or some other male pony. Oh, it could have been Plus those two play. OC ponies from the vinyl fanfic. Oh, oh yeah, it was, I think. <laughs> You're right. I think. Well... What's important is you did Jason Funderburger before. That's true. I had never heard him so sincere, so determined in my time with him. Yeah, that's what I was going for as an actor. <laughs> I threw myself forward, 
hugging him tightly and not letting go. Oh my. Even after the be- kettle began boiling, we almost you guys would have... fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's going to get into. Chapter 2, A Steamy Night with Flash. Warning. Ooh. Clop. Hugging him tightly and not letting go, even after the kettle began boiling. We almost would have fallen asleep there if we hadn't started sh- How do you fall asleep with the sound of a boiling kettle? If we hadn't started shivering. But get up, we didn't- It means they're so entranced in their love that they don't realize the outside world. I know, but like- You how... should read subtext, Wizzy. Come on. You'd have to be pretty damn entranced to not hear the friggin' boiling kettle. It's one of the worst noises in the world. Clearly, you've never been in love. That's pal. true, but clearly, um, they have hearing problems. You have a stupid problem. It's because you're stupid. Oh my god! I'm just gonna continue reading. But get up, we did. Not taking long to make the journey from the couch to the bed. The second my head hit the pillow, and I felt Flash's warm arms around me, I knew I was in for a very peaceful sleep. Oh yeah, peaceful sleep, sure. But as we laid there, a mouse's hair away from sleep. It's kind of uncomfortable the way we're wrapped around. This man, I don't want your arm there. I want, <laughs> like, but in a surprise turn of events, Sunburst wanted to be Big Spoon. <laughs> But as we laid there, a mouse's hair away from sleep, Flash suddenly jolted upright, pulling me away from sleep and the warmth he was giving me. Sunburst! He whispered quickly, yet excitedly. I know your confidence is going to take a long time to build, but I think I know where to begin. Oh, what, with turning off the burner and stopping the kettle from boiling already? Come on. That thing's been boiling for hours. It was always it was always warmer in Cyrus Hollow, and it was always sunny in Philadelphia. Being a long way off the Crystal Empire, but here we stood, Flash and I, in the middle of the grassy field, I always made an effort not to go near. Whenever I came back to visit Mum, I was, Oh my goodness, this, this author British. is British. <laughs> you do realize it's a Canadian show. Show some respect. These are Canadian actors. Say mom. If I was writing a Doctor Who fanfic, I would write it mum. And also reference hockey and maple syrup and Jim Hortons. I think that's the place. Yeah. It's not the point I was making, but yeah. (laughs) Not out of anger or spite, but out of embarrassment. Shame, I guess. I looked down. Old emotions I had buried a long time ago beginning to resurface. Hi, Dad! I croaked, looking from the gravestone to Flash. Oh, I didn't, somehow I didn't realize that that was his mom's gravestone. Oh. His mom's grave. Er, uh, huh. Well, then, that's embarrassing, considering a few things. Ross, have you fallen in love with his mom? Nope. Looking from the gravestone to Flash, he urged me to keep going. Looking back over to my mum at the cemetery entrance, Flash had told okay, me. Okay, yes, I have. I knew it. Turns out she's not dead. She just ran away to date Ross. Flash had told me later that she had cried the whole time as she looked. At... Wait, what? Looked on at us? No, How... yeah, it's not his. Uh, what I was actually gonna say is no, his mom isn't dead. It's his dad. What? His dad's the dead one. I'm so confused. His dad was holding the coat. What? How much in the future is this? He was a ghost. Was he? What? He was a ghost. Was he? It was a vision of (sighs) his dad from beyond the grave. God, I'm so confused. I don't like this part. Whatever. Whole time as she looked on at us. Wizzy doesn't get subtext, you see. Eh, it's been a while. I didn't know how to do this. I guess I should have visited sooner. But I just needed a push, I guess. I turned away, 
Trying to keep my composure, but tears began to stream down my face, and I began to sob uncontrollably. I choked on my tears, and talking got hard. Flash put a hoof on my back and got closer to me, yet patiently kept his distance from me. Are, have you seriously not forgotten, not forgiven him, forgave him, whatever? Eventually, I got a hold of my breathing once again, and I turned back to Dad. Okay, um, so Sunburst can see ghosts, apparently. Never mind. I've got someone for you to, to meet, Dad. His name is Flash, and he's... Fucking your son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keeping a respectful distance and then that. <laughs> I choked out another cry, but I looked on, using my hoof to dry my eyes once again, sniffling and sniffling. I was struggling, but I was determined to go on. He's my... my boyfriend, Dad. You love him. Just don't take him from me. He's <laughs> smart and funny and a good cook. I laughed a bit through the sobs, sniffling once again. Wait, why would Flash be a good cook? Come on. What time does he have to cook? I don't know. Sniffling Maybe once again. Maybe he just does it at home. I don't know. Maybe you know he what? was he went to college for cooking, but ultimately became a guard because Because that of his pays bulging better. biceps. My nose and eyes were beginning to feel almost as sore as my throat as I went on. He's been making sure I eat full meals. <laughs> and that I'm looked after my that I that I'm looking after myself. Sometimes I feel like I don't deserve him. At that, Flash nudged me slightly. He truly does hate it when I say that. But then I remember what you. But then I remember what you said. I was gonna get the coolest mare in Equestria. Dad, you're wrong. Fuck you, Dad. <laughs> You homophobic piece of shit. <laughs> he kicks the gravestone over. <laughs> At first, uh, when he saw his dad, I thought it was going to turn out his dad was homophobic, and then he comes to terms with his gay son. And then it plays I Love My Dead Gay I Son. I also thought it like that. Oh. I laughed a bit again. <laughs> and smiled through my tears a little brighter. Well, the mayor part wasn't entirely true. I know that you would think he's the coolest stallion in Equestria because I love him, and that you would have been en that, and that would have been enough for you. The sobbing came again. Flash went in for I a hug. I just realized this time. we kind of accidentally made this uh, gay couple the two most annoying characters that we've ever done. <laughs> You with your this thing, whatever you're doing, and me with my this. Thing. <laughs> okay, but come on, it's kind of a match made in heaven. It's lovely, I know. Flash went in for a hug this time. It was filled with so much warmth and energy, enough to keep me going. But this time, I'd lost the smile. I'm, I'm sorry. I should have waited. I should have told you sooner. And I've always regretted it. Come on. I am reading things that aren't there, just like he's seeing things that aren't there. <laughs> so damn much. I Whoa. owe you so much more, and I should have been confident enough to tell you. The worst day of my life was hearing that you were gone, and... and... With a couple of long breaths, I closed my eyes and kept going. I could feel Flash's hoof on my shoulder. He was right there beside me. But when I turned around, it wasn't him. It was my dad. <laughs> that would be really trippy. <laughs> Turns out he was my dad all along. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> okay. I'd let you leave without you knowing such a huge part of who I was. I miss you, and I want you back just to tell you that. And to tell you I'm sorry that I couldn't be there. And I wasn't there. There was so much I wanted to say, but I guess I can still say it to you. 
You're just a little further away. The most important thing is that, Dad, I love you so much, and you would have loved to meet him, even if he isn't a mare. I leaned into Flash, letting him embrace me in front of Dad's grave. We stood there, one minute, two minutes, ten minutes. Mom had left by that point. Okay, so his mom I'm is... I'm bored! I'm so confused. His mom didn't say a thing. No. Mom had left by that point. Gone home to make us some supper. But we stood there, quietly, hugging for every pony to see for what I felt like a century. Okay, so there are a lot of ponies in this graveyard, apparently. And for the first time ever, I don't think of... I didn't think about the stairs. Those stairs, you know, how hard they are to climb up. All that. I didn't think about the judging faces, if there were any. All I thought about was how privileged I was to have the ponies that I had, and how much they loved me. And done! Okay, why is it Sunbursts exclaimed? Shouldn't it be I exclaimed? What's happening? Uh-oh, we switched to third person. Sunburst exclaimed happily from his spot under the large oak tree. Just then did he realize how cool the shade had gotten, despite how bright and sunny the park was. And how was. cool actually talking in the third person was. <laughs> Sunburst exclaimed happily. <laughs> <laughs> he finally took a look around, stretching his neck and his back after hours of lying in that one spot. Colts and fillies now filled the park with their laughs and shrill voices as school finished and the weekend began. Sunburst looked around, smiling as he watched them all play and talk. Parents sat around in small groups nearby, enjoying the day themselves. It really was a fantastic sight, but it felt... But it left Sunburst sighing wistfully as he threw his ink and quill back into his saddlebag. Is he just drawing Flash? Yeah, he is. He looked over to the entrance... Flash Sentry was there. Oh, Draw me like one of your French mares. <laughs> I don't think he was actually drawing Flash. I don't know what he was drawing. I guess maybe he was just painting the site. He looked over to the entrance. Flash Sentry was there, looking over at him and smiling. Sunburst smiled back, giving him a small wave as he packed up his papers and slung his bag over his back, lazily walking over to where Flash waited for him. How long were you standing there? Sunburst asked as... He opened the gate and gave his boyfriend a big hug. Long enough, which is also what I said when I didn't have any lines for like the past five minutes. <laughs> Probably even longer now that I think about it. <laughs> Flash replied, returning the hug. Long enough to know what? Sunburst raised an eyebrow as he broke the hug, breaking into a slow walk next to Flash. Long enough to know that every couple of minutes you would get uncomfortable and shuffle around a bit, and that you instantly start smiling like a goober every time you hear kids playing in the background. Flash shot him a cheeky smile, nudging him off balance a bit. Sunburst bit back, knocking Flash a little bit, har a little bit harder, but still smiling. Soon it got into a fist fight, and they had to be detained in separate <laughs> cells. I guess I have that paternal instinct. Did you get your half of the papers signed? Oh my god, they're divorced. Don't know. <laughs> of course. I did it while you were out here hob hobby riding. You just need to sign a cup of things on sector two i have gotten a lot worse in my talking over the years <laughs> Aww. oh for the love of adoption papers i know they need to be thorough but there are tons of places they could streamline it a bit i won't go into depths of here but i tell you i almost want to highlight all the poor choices they made when designing those things that's why I'm not adopting. <laughs> Sunburst took one last look at the playground, turning his frown back into a small into a small smile. Turn that fucking frown upside down, you asshole. <laughs> but it'll be worth it. So did you finish the memoir? 
Flash asked, getting a bit closer and throwing his wing over Sunburst. Of course, all written up, ready to go with the others. You could publish those, Uno. What is Make up a with little that? autobiography or something. You are pretty well known now. I'd almost go as far to say you're a very famous wizard. <laughs> okay, but the whole Uno thing is like their own idiolect, but they're putting it into the story. I, yeah. I don't I don't get it. Me neither. Flash smirked. Shut up! Sunburst whined, giving Flash a slight knee in the ribs. Jesus! <laughs> Kneeing him in the ribs? <laughs> also, you don't have knees. Horses have Stupid. knees? Well, you, you do, about? but not in a way that you could, like, bam, like, get them. I guess if you picture them as horses, then uh, it makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. Forcing him into a small chuckle as they walked along. But I know, but I might. I don't know. I still think when he slash she is old enough, they should read them. They're really cool, and you are an amazing writer. Flash smiled. I guess, but first we gotta get those very unoptimized papers in. Sunburst got closer to Flash. Sunburst got closer to let Flash's wing fit right on, right around him, getting as close as possible. Not a thing on his mind other than the small little hole they were just about to visit. So I bet you weren't expecting <sighs> a second horror story. Horror? In a row, right? <laughs> oh my god. I knew it. You I'm saying horror because... Time. I'm saying horror because of the ghost. <laughs> not because of homosexuals. Oh, sure. It's true. I loved that story. I, I thought it was okay. Story. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not big on to romance, especially with like uh, fim fiction stuff. I've read a few good ones, but they were never particularly uh, my go-to when hmm. reading. I like a lot of romance stuff. Uh, only when it's uh, gay, though, you know? Relatable. Yeah, because he is extremely straight-phobic. Yeah. It's called heterophobic, and it's a lifestyle. I wouldn't know. I'm not straight. <laughs> um. Anyways, where are, my, where are my asexual stories at, man? We did one. Like, with all of... We didn't Wait, do one. We didn't do on one show. on the podcast, but we did do one. Um, we did read one, and that was it. Yeah, I don't think there are any other asexual centric stories out there. We also only did uh, one gay story, so yeah. But guess what? There are tons more of those out there. Fair point. Fair complaint. I'm just saying, if you can whine about that, can I whine about the asexual thing that I don't actually give a shit about? Classic asexual. Not giving two darns. Yep. You know uh, what they say. Asexual, don't give a fuck. I think it's easier for me to really like this story because I do not know these characters except for this story. I uh, sort of know fair. Flash, but I've always, you know, coded him as gay. Well, he's not. And you will stop that right now, young man. You really hate the gays. He's totally got a thing for Twilight, dude. Now, Sunburst hates the gays, but in a very different sense. Get it? Like stairs. Nope. The gays. G-A-Z-E. You get it. <laughs> I'm following. It's because of Hitler, isn't it? I think that's where we end the podcast. No, that's where I end your life. Come here, you. <laughs> Shink. All right. Thank you all for listening. Please go check out the, the story in the description below. Please. Without our garbage over it. 
uh, have a great night or day or whatever time you people think exist. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.